So I bought this tea advent calendar thinking I was going to drink it. Ha, huh, what a fool I was. So here we are. This is what I call Tea Simber. 24 doodles with 24 different teas. So starting off with day one, we have English breakfast. So of course I had to draw a traditional English breakfast with someone zombie walking first thing in the morning to go get some. You know, when you wake up in the morning, you smell the coffee, you smell the eggs, the bacon, the toast. You're tired, but my goodness, does that not smell really good? Now, of course I did have to draw a traditional English breakfast. This is not something I normally eat for breakfast, but the tea is called English breakfast. So it would be stupid if I drew anything else, right? No Pop-Tarts here. Just a classic, what Google tells me, English breakfast. I mean, hey, it looks good, I'm not going to argue that. Now this is where the trouble came in. I had to layer the tea about 10 times to get that dark color that I got. And as excited as I was about this project, the amount of time I spent putting layers of tea on here, waiting for it to dry, and yes, I did use a hair dryer to speed it up. I just wasn't sure if I was going to be able to keep this up because this took a long time. But she turned out really cute. Day two brings us the goodnight blend. So obviously, obviously, I had to draw something very sleepy and tired and goodnight themed. So I decided to do a cat creature or something sleeping on a moon. I thought I would try to do some lineless work with the tea, just try to ink the cat itself and then go in with the tea and try to do a lineless thing. With these month long daily challenges, I always try to do something silly or just try to do something fun, something simple, just something to spark some creativity and just try to do something different and just see what happens because you never know if you don't try. And even though the tea is really light after it dries, it created this border. So all of the water pooled to the edges and it created this really nice tea light colored border and it was just so cool. Plus putting all of the little water droplets for the stars was really pretty as well. Overall, just giving it that really soft, light, good night feel to it. Day three brought us chai, but the French vanilla variety. So I was thinking about vanilla. So when I think vanilla, I mostly think of ice cream for the most part. So I thought I would do a sort of blob challenge or at least play around with the medium of tea. So I put a lot of tea on the paper and really tried to pull it up so that it dripped downwards to create this ice cream drippy sort of effect. I just wanted to play around with each day and just do something new and keep it fresh and have fun with it. This was a little doodle, sort of not super serious art. I don't know if you can even call it a challenge. It was just something fun I wanted to do, something different. And this little ice cream guy is no exception. I just wanted to have fun with creating something silly. So there we have it. We have this weird little ice cream dude looking very concerned while he eats himself as he drips. You know, normal Christmas tea advent drawing doodle stuff. Nothing weird to see here. Coming up next is our green tea, but of the pomegranate, raspberry, and strawberry variety, which I was a little disappointed with. I'm not super surprised by this, but I was really hoping there would be a really strong green color to this one. So I was really hoping to play around with that. But when I swatched it, I was so disappointed to find out that it was just not. It was the slightest of green colors. It was mostly yellow for the most part. I really didn't expect much color from a lot of these teas. I did just expect some light browns, but you know, a girl can dream, right? So I took inspiration from the name and just drew some little fruit dudes. I just thought it would be fun to just draw some silly little faces with all of these little fruit guys just interacting. I just kept this one simple and put a circle around them to help them pop. I think it's just really, really interesting how just putting a little bit of color behind a character can really make it pop when you keep it white. I think it looks cool. So this one's really simple, but I think the characters speak for themselves. Peppermint and creamy vanilla is day five. And since I had just done a vanilla ice cream sort of drawing, I didn't want to do another one. So I thought we should go back to doing a character design. So I just drew this girl. She's, she's a vanilla character because she's kind of plain, but you know what? She's got some peppermint in her. She's a little spicy when she needs to be. She's got her striped tights on, her bun looks like a peppermint, and she's using a candy cane as an actual cane. Look, she might only be 30 years old, but she's already got those back problems 
problems. They start early, kids. That's right. 30 doesn't seem old, but you start getting back problems and next thing you know, you're old at 30. Don't know why that's where this voiceover went, but anyways, she was really fun to make. She was cute and pepperminty. And just to let you guys know, I do a lot of tea layering off of camera because it just, it took so long and it gets really repetitive to watch. So I figured I would spare that for you. So I mainly recorded the base coloring and then the rest is off camera. Day six, coming in with a classic Earl Grey tea. So since I've gotten into drinking tea and I first really knew that Earl Grey was a flavor, I could never help but think that Earl Grey was this guy somewhere out there with this long bushy gray beard because you know, his name is Earl Grey. He can't not have a gray hair. So I always imagined this old man who made tea out of his beard. Don't ask me why. I just like to picture that instead of little spices and leaves and stuff that the Earl Grey tea had beard hair in it, which sounds disgusting and it is, but that's what I always thought. So long story short, basically I drew this old man with this bushy beard and little flowers and stuff sticking out of it because he's got a floral, beautiful, yummy tea beard. And that's it, that's, that's my old man. <laughs> Old Mr. Earl Grey and his beard tea. Our next tea is lemon and ginger. So with this one, I couldn't help but thinking of this lemon character, person, person, lemon, lemon with legs and arms, running around with his little doggy, his little ginger doggy. So I thought that was really cute. I couldn't get it out of my head. So that is what I went with. This is another one of those simple little doodles where I did a black and white pin drawing and just put the tea behind it in a circle because the tea was just so light. I just felt like I couldn't do anything with it. So might as well make the characters pop off of the page. And I also used a little bit of tea to shade with, at least shade as much as I could with something that was that light of a color. I think it did help here and there just to add a little something, but overall I just wanted to use the tea to pop the characters off of the page. These little guys are cute and I like them. Simple and cute. Look at that doggy, so lumpy. A little lumpy, a little lumpy lump. Day eight is our counterpart. It is the lady gray tea. So this time we had to create a lady. We had, we had to create a lady. I was legally bound to create a female character with a tea called lady. Didn't want to get arrested. Anyways, ha, huh, funny joke aside, I wanted to create a sort of dripping drawing like I did with the ice cream before. I hadn't done another one in a long time. So I was really itching to do some dripping, droppy tea hair. So I did my best to create a hair shape on the top of her head. And then I let it drip down on the sides and created this weirdly looking stringy hair, but I think she's still cute. And then I just created this kind of goofy face. I didn't want to make her super serious. And I was taking a lot of inspiration from that weird goopy hair. So I made her features really simple, made her kind of cute, kind of silly looking, but also just, you know, a cute girl character. And I have to say this one kind of gave me Steph from Doodle Date vibes. I don't know if it's the eyeballs or the hair or what, but it kind of reminds me of her drawings. Don't know why. Just me, maybe. All right, so we had a second chance at green tea thanks to day nine. So when I swatched this one, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that it had a lot more green color than the previous green tea. Now I'm sure the previous green tea was, I guess, watered down with some other fruit flavors and other stuff, but I did do a drawing with tea video a while ago when I used green tea and it was so green. I mean, it was the powder, it was matcha, but I expect green. All right, I have these expectations for some reason. Anyways, as you can already see, I wanted to do something Christmas themed because this is a kind of, kind of a Christmas video, right? It's, it's an advent video. So we gotta have something in here Christmas. So with green, what else am I gonna do? That's right, I'm going to draw a Christmas tree and I couldn't help but notice some future flavors. Did I cheat? Yes. That had some great color to them as well. So I cheated and I put some decorations on the tree that were colored because I couldn't resist. And after putting some pin work on this one, honestly, it might be my favorite one. It seems like something you could find on a Christmas card or something, so it's too bad that I drew this so late. But I really like this one, especially the fact that it is made out of tea and there are so many imperfections like the bleeding and where it dried funny. I really like that. All the little quirks about it. Gives it character. Mm -hmm. 
So with this tea on day 10, we have Honeybush, Mandarin, and Orange, and honestly, I, I may have forgotten about taking inspiration from this tea altogether. Though you can argue I did draw a tropical island, so these, these fruits are somewhat tropical, right? I mean, maybe? I don't actually know where you can find these fruits. Either way, look, I did forget about taking inspiration, but that's fine. I really wanted to do something that was more of a complete scene and not just a character sitting there. So I drew this weirdly simple sort of silhouetted islandy thing. And then I went in with some black pen and created all of these little creatures around the island. I didn't really plan this one out at all. I just kind of winged it. And this is what I ended up with. Don't know how we ended up here, but that's fine. Just a little something different. There you go. All right, you guys, day 11 was rough orange and cinnamon spice. I just, I don't, I don't know what happened here. Uh, I thought it would be fun to draw a bunch of oranges, just really simple circles with little green tea leaves. That's right, I stole the green tea from the previous one. And so I drew all of these little oranges all over and then I thought it would be fun to draw all of these different crazy faces on them. And honestly, woof, this is the worst one yet. I thought it was gonna be really silly looking but it just ended up looking really stupid. I guess my main problem was that I thought it would be funny to put a lot of weird anime faces in there which honestly didn't turn out as good as I thought they would. I thought they would be stupid and add some really silly stupidness to them but I do kind of wish I just put my Casey style faces in there. Oh well can't win them all right? Next up we have pure chamomile, 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 hmm. I think both are right. Anyway, so I wanted to create obviously some sort of a flower imagery illustration, but I also wanted to play around with something a little more abstract, but also playing around with the medium and the wetness, wetness, the fact that it's watery and I've been playing around with it just kind of doing its own thing. So I did a circle of tea and then got my hair dryer and just blasted the middle of it and had it just go out any direction that it went. So not having control of the medium is something that I think is really fun to play around with. Sorry, I keep saying play around with, but you know, it's one of my catchphrases. So I ended up just drawing this little dude with a flower on his head and he's being all silly and it's like an explosion. It's a little bit abstract, but also not so much because it's just a flower with a dude. It's kind of cute. I don't know. I like this one. I had fun with it and, you know, illustrated a thing. All right, lucky day number 13, we have another Earl Grey tea. So I wanted to do another beard drawing because I'm very creative in that way. So instead of just drawing an old man in his beard, I thought I would do another sort of hair dryer blower thing where I just put a bunch of water slash tea down and then blast it and see what happens. I didn't play around too much with the shape that it created, but basically I just wanted a beard with a crazy shape or something. And then I drew a dude in there and I thought it would be cute to give him a Santa hat. And then that made me really think about those beard ornaments. So I wanted to decorate his beard and just put a lot of little details in there and just make it look Christmassy because again, this is a sort of Christmas video and I haven't done too much that is Christmassy. So I just went crazy and just had a lot of fun decorating this guy's beard and it was, it was really fun. It was really interesting. He's a jolly guy and I like this one. Look at him. Next up, we have another English breakfast, but this time it is decaffeinated. So I tried to take the inspiration from the decaffeination inspiration because we had already done a English breakfast. So what's the difference? It's decaffeinated. Though I did want to draw another English breakfast inspired drawing. So I did English breakfast foods, but this time they are very sad and tired because they're decaffeinated. At first I was thinking about drawing a character just being really tired and ready for breakfast, but that's kind of of what I drew on the first one so I thought I would just really try layering the tea on this one and just really build up those colors and that darkness and get as much detail into these food drawings as I could because it's not something that I've been really pushing on some of these. Like I said the layering just takes so long to dry. Tea takes a lot longer to dry than watercolors. Very unfortunate. This sad yummy dude is... he's, he's a sad yummy dude. <laughs> Thank you. 
coming up next we have a pure peppermint tea. So something I think about in the holidays when it comes to peppermint aside from candy canes is peppermint lattes. So I thought I would make this one a sort of simple and sweet, ha, huh, sweet, get it? Cause I'm drawing like cookies and stuff. Anyways, so something I've really liked about working with this tea is the textures you can get when it just kind of dries weird. So I just made a circle and drew some items inside of it. And around that circle, I did a wash of tea that created some really nice textures and stuff. It's not an illustration, but I do think it creates some really interesting visuals. I guess it's sort of like abstract art, so I don't know, it's a thing. So on the inside, I drew a latte, a candy cane, some other Christmassy things that I just thought of because well, I drew the drink and the candy cane and I was like, okay, I'm gonna draw peppermint things, but I, I couldn't think of any more peppermint things. So I just drew some Christmas things. Like I said, this one's really simple, but I tend to like simple, eh? All right, next up we have a peppermint and creamy vanilla. And like earlier, I mentioned that when I see vanilla, I think ice cream and baked goods. So I was hoping to work with an abstract one on this one. So I was thinking of a baked goods, like a cupcake, maybe something Christmassy that was decorated. So I put down a blotch for the top of the cupcake and then I used my hairdryer to hopefully create something a little abstract and then play off of the shapes and come up with something. This one turned out really weird. I couldn't really see anything. Uh, there was just some sort of thin pieces coming off. On the right side, there was a chunky bit that looked like a Christmas tree, so I was able to do that. But for the little tiny bits, I couldn't really think of anything, so I thought, okay, maybe a chest is opening and it's all shiny and magical. I tried to make it into a winter wonderland sort of decorated cupcake. I put some snowmen up there. It turned into a muffin. There's blueberries everywhere. I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> Next up we have our, yes, our third green tea flavor. Fun fact, I actually hate green tea. It tastes a little bit too seaweedy for me. Wish I liked it, but I don't. I did appreciate the additional fruitiness to this tea, but not a fan. So I wanted to try to do another Christmas illustration, especially because I really liked the way that Christmas tree turned out. And I couldn't help but notice that the next tea was going to be quite a red one, so I couldn't help but combine the two. And I made a wreath. I thought this would be a really fun way to layer the teas because the teas are so, so painful to layer, but this would be a really good way to layer and get different colors. And by colors, I mean tones and darknesses of the tea, and then put those berries on top and then some additional inking. This is a cute one. Again, this one looks really cool. I just love the way it just looks, I don't know, just the way that the tea does its own thing. You can't really control it, but it looks really cool. You've got some nice textures. I mean, look at that bow. Dang. So because we are on such a roll with these Christmas illustrations with our pure rooibos red tea, we of course, I mean, come on, who do you think I'm going to draw? Santa, of course, Santa's red. We have to draw a Santa. This tea is a little bit more on the orangey side than it is red, but I do really like the color. And especially when you water it down, it makes the perfect skin tone color. Perfect for my Santa. Not sure that I've really ever drawn Santa before. I do know that I wanted to make him more on the simple side. And of course he had to be silly and cute. Honestly, I just really love the way that this Santa turned out, which I feel like is, is kind of rare because I think Santas tend to look kind of stupid for some reason. Either way, I really like the way that you could get a nice blend of dark to light gradient with this red color. I did kind of play around with it with the cheeks for a hot second. Didn't like the way it looked. I also shaded this Santa. Didn't like the way it looked, so I ended up just going back over it. Thankfully, when painting with tea, you can just rub away any sort of colors you got on there and smooth it back out. Very easy to work with in certain ways, not, not most. I put a circle of green tea behind him just to help him pop, just to add a little bit of the green color. And I just love the way his beard and all the trimming just kind of pop off because it's white and it looks so good. You'll never believe what tea is next. That's right, we have another, another green tea. This time with lemon. So this is a bit more of a vibrant and bright. I guess it's because of the lemon, maybe? I don't know. 
Either way, I for some reason thought of a dinosaur. Nothing says Christmas like a dinosaur. I mean, I guess I guess most of these illustrations haven't really been Christmas themed anyway, but I felt like drawing a dinosaur and I still had some Santa color left over. So why not give that dinosaur a Santa hat and then also put some flowers in the ground? This is another one of those that's really, I guess, a guilty pleasure. I just like to draw dinosaurs. It's a very simple, fun shape to play around with. I put some decorated Christmas trees in the background and and yep, this is definitely a Christmas dinosaur. You know, keeping it traditional up in here. Moving on to day 20, we have another Lady Grey tea. So I wanted to do another drippy hair one because I really enjoyed the other drippy hair drawing we did. Unfortunately, I guess creativity got the best of me and this is basically the same hairdo. There's just a few differences like, I don't know, leaving space for her ears and having it drip over her shoulder and putting her lips and stuff like that in with tea. So she looks very similar to the first girl. They could be older sisters. They could be the same character. I don't know. Doesn't mean I had any less fun with it. Just kind of taking it easy, just doing some simple hair stuff and lining. She did turn out really cute and I do like the different tones that I got with this tee. I will say, messed up that right ear real good. So I just threw a flower on top of it, you know? Just, just covered up those mistakes. For day 21, we finally have a different breakfast. It's Irish breakfast. But when I Googled Irish breakfast, it was just the same as English breakfast. You know, beans, eggs, ham, toast, roasted vegetables. It was all the same. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna do my own breakfast. And you know what is kind of tea-like? Syrup, because it is translucent. It's got a brown color. And I'm sure if I layered it enough, I could make some really nice looking syrup. So I did that circle of whiteness because I just think it's really fun. It really highlights whatever I'm drawing. It's really simple. It's really nice looking, I think. And I drew three little pancakes just kind of floating there and I drew some syrup dripping on top of them. This one was one of the most fun ones I had drawing. Making the syrup was really fun. Creating the texture on the pancakes was fun. The little pancakes are just so cute anyways. I love drawing that drippiness overall. I really like this one. Our next tea flavor is just a regular old chai. Not really sure what inspiration to take from this one, but I really like chai lattes. They just make me feel all cozy and warm and they just have so many little spices in them. So when I think spices, I think kitchen, homely, you know, comfort foods, cooking, baking, stuff like that. So I thought I would draw a house. Now I didn't draw like a homely house or anything. I thought it would be more fun to just draw this really tall house. I thought I would just kind of keep it simple, just make this little house and it's more of a spooky house. But then I thought it would be cute to put a Christmas wreath on the front door of this house. Look, it's a haunted house, but even ghosts like to celebrate Christmas sometimes. I mean, or just like vampire. I mean, I don't, I don't, the vampire to celebrate Christmas? I don't know. So I kept this one really simple, especially when it comes to the coloring. I just did a background sky color because I keep saying I really like it when things are white and they pop off of that page, especially when it comes to these tea drawings because there's, there's only one color. It's usually pretty light. So you got to work with what you got and making things pop with the whiteness is really nice looking. So this is a cute house. So going into this particular tea, I thought it would be more pink or red, a pomegranate and raspberry tea. But when I swatched it, it reminded me a lot of the tea I used for my tea drawing video. It started off sort of pinkish and then as it dried, I just straight up turned gray, <laughs> which was kind of interesting. This is the most different tea color out of all of the ones we have so far. So I did want to get a really dark gray and play around with maybe stormy clouds, but it took so much layering to get that dark gray. And it was just so light of a gray. I thought this one's kind of a cop out, but it's kind of fun. So I thought I would just create this really small cloud in this gray sky and give it a little smiley face. So was kind of hoping the gray to be a little bit darker, but it's so light. You really have to look for that little cloud on the page and it's got a little smiley face. So it's just really simple, but it's kind of adorable. There's just this little storm cloud and he's like, hi, you can't see me, but I'm here if you look hard enough.
And our last tea, our last day of tea simber is chamomile, honey, and vanilla. Look, maybe I was feeling a little drained at the end of this one, but I just wanted to play around with another simple one with that little white circle colored in space and just, just make a simple little doodle. So I have this just plain white character with a beehive on their head. I've got some flowers on top of it and some bees flying around and that's about it. It's really simple. I think it's really cute. This tea was really light, so it was hard to build some layers. Just one of those teas where you had to put about 17,000 layers and I did not feel like sitting there with a hair dryer for two hours. I'm telling you, a lot of these doodles took absolutely much longer to take than they should have. For a small doodle like this, should have taken me a few minutes, but it probably took me 30 minutes to do this because of how long it took for the tea to dry. But this little guy's cute, so whatever. And that's it, 24 doodles for 24 different teas in Tea Simber. In case you're wondering, this is all 24 teas and their swatches. So they look a lot darker than what I did because I was able to put a huge amount of tea on here. Look how dark that is. I couldn't get that unless I wanted to put a puddle of tea and wait three hours until it dried. So, ugaroony. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments which of these tea doodles is your favorite. Do you like tea? Do you participate in advent calendars? Have a Merry Christmas if that's what you celebrate. Have a wonderful December. All right guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.